Lord, we give you all the glory. We give you honor. Take it, Lord. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you honor. Lord, we bless your holy name. Today is the finale of our choir weekend and we've just come beyond the pomp and glamour to give it back to the God who lives and never dies. Thank you, yes, the same God yesterday, he is the same today. Has he said something, he will do it. I'll give you a little example. So I was employed the same day with somebody that happened, that turned out to be a friend. And then two years later, there was a massive layoff in the company. Massive, massive layoff. And she was affected. She went to the director to ask the director why she was laid off and she was told that it was because she didn't possess certain qualities or certain things that they needed. And she deemed it fit to remind them that they hadn't laid me off, but I didn't have the same thing that she didn't have. But there's the God whose king's heart are in his hand. And the director told her to leave me out of their discussion. So I've come here today to tell you that there's a God that clears all obstacles. But how did I know? Just like the king of Aram in the, Bi uh, 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 in the Bible was asking his subjects that who is telling the king of Israel what we discuss? Is there a spy among us? And they told him that it's Elisha the prophet that tells the king of Israel what you discuss in your big chamber. So the same way, this girl came to me to gist me what happened in the director's office not knowing that she was reporting herself. The same God back then is the same God right now. Yes, give it to the one who is capable of parting the Red Sea for you. Give it to the one who is capable of making wilderness in your desert. Father, we bless you, we worship you. A roadway in your desert, give it to him. Give it to him, he's worthy to be praised. Worship him, he's faithful. Lamentations 3, 22 to 23 said, It's because of the Lord's great love that we're not consumed. His compassion fails not. Great is his faithfulness. He's faithful, he's faithful, he's faithful. He's faithful beyond anything we can think of. He's faithful. Yes, he's faithful. He's a God that says this and does it. Open your mouth and worship him with us this morning. We've just come to pour our hearts to him. We've come to break our alabaster box at his feet. We've come as we are to give him praise. We bring you. Join us this morning to worship the God who is, who was, and is to come. Father, we give you praise. We worship you. We bless your holy name. Be thou highly exalted. Be we worship you. Thank you, Lord. We bless you. Be thou highly exalted, Lord. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We give you praise. We give you adoration. We glorify your holy name. Take all the glory, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
give it back to the God who does the impossible. Yes. By the world standard, I'm that girl who shouldn't be able to conceive. But the Lord in Deuteronomy has said that none shall be barren in the land. In Psalms, he said, blessed is the man who is the same God that uses the basket to fetch water just to confound the bucket. Yes, he's the one that has made my quiver full of them. Father, we worship you. Yes, he did not only make my quiver full of them, he topped it up with a testimony. So when I went into the delivery room for my last child, the devil kept his advocate there to tell me that mother will be lost and child will be lost. But I held on to what he said. I will not cast my young. With long life will he satisfy me and show me his salvation. Yes, I kept on holding on. I kept on holding on. And even when my faith was failing me, he's the God that remains faithful even when we are unfaithful. Yes, he showed up strong. When the, the devil's advocate had told me that the baby was not coming and that I was not dilating anymore. I told her, do what you want to do. But she had to wait for the doctor because we serve a God of the 11th hour. The doctor came and before they could get themselves ready to receive the child, the baby came flying into the doctor's hand. Ah, is he not a God that does wonders? Yes, the same devil's advocate came to me a few minutes later and said, congratulations, you are a strong woman. Yes, I'm a woman of strength because I serve a God who never fails, who never lies. Yes, we worship you, almighty God. Oh yes, I will praise your name. Great is your faithfulness to me. Great is your faithfulness to me. I still bless you. Yes, I'll still bless you. Hey. I still bless you. Oh, I still bless you. Yeah, I still bless you. Oh, I still bless you. In the middle of the storm, yes, Lord. in the middle of my trial, I still bless you. In the middle of the road, when I don't know where to go, I still bless you. In the middle of my storm, in the middle of my trial, I still bless you. When I'm in the middle of the road, and I don't know which way to go, I still, still bless you. I still bless you. I still bless you. I still bless you. I got a reason to bless you. Yeah. You've been fair. 
You deserve it. The disciples called upon the name of Jesus while he was still asleep. No move happened. But the moment Jesus woke up, there was a move. Yes. When Jesus steps into a situation, things change. Mm. Situations take a different turn around. Today, this morning, as we worship, we see him make a move. Wow. We see him take a move. Have your way this morning, oh God. Yes, Lord. Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God, we believe. Yes, we can say that wonders are still what you do. Bodies are still being raised. Giants are still in sin. God, we believe. Yes, we can say that wonders are still what you do. Oh, 
what you do. do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts on you. Come and do what you do. We need a more. We need a more. We need a more. We need a more. Yeah, we need a more. We need a more. the invisible, the only wise God, the one that sees the end from the very beginning, the ancient of days, the I am that I am, the king of glory, the omnipotent, the omniscient, the omnipresence God, the one that says a thing and it comes to pass, the one that opens a door and no man can close it, the one that fights our unseen battles, Father Lord, we worship you. We give you praise for you are kind. You are good. You are faithful. Even in our unfaithfulness, Lord, you've been faithful. You alone, Lord, are worthy. The incomparable, the incredible God. Jehovah Lord, we worship you. We give you praise, O oh God. If our thought, if our whole body was turned to God, Father, it won't be enough to praise you, O oh God. Lord, we worship you. We thank you for your tender mercies, O oh God. We thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for your greatness in our life. We thank you because you keep doing wonders. For the gift of life, we say thank you. For the opportunity to come before your presence this day, Lord, we say thank you. For our jobs, we say thank you. For our families, we say thank you. For the gift, O oh God, of the Holy Spirit, Lord, we say thank you. We worship your name. We give you praise, O oh God. For there is none like you. You are the only true God. King of glory, Lord. We exalt you, O oh God. We give you all the praise. Take all of the glory, O oh God. You say, O oh God, if thou should mark iniquity, O oh Lord, who shall stand? But there is forgiveness with thee that thou mayest be feared. Father, Lord, we come before your mercy throne this day. We ask, O oh God, for your mercy. Every way, Lord, will sin against you. Every way, O oh God, will fall in short of your grace. King of glory, have mercy, O oh God. Have mercy, O oh God. Father, Lord, you say, if we come before you with a broken and a contrite heart, that you would have mercy on us. Lord, we seek your mercy this day. Mercy, O oh God. Anywhere we've fallen short, O oh God, in our thoughts, in our deeds, in our words, in our actions, O oh God. Father, show mercy upon us. Father, show mercy upon us, O oh God, in the matchless name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the opportunity of another choir weekend, O oh God, this year. 
2021. Father, you've been faithful. Father, Lord, you've been awesome. Father, Lord, we thank you, O oh God, for many have gone this past year, but you kept us, not because we are beautiful, not because we've been, we've, we've been sinless, because your words, our righteousness is like a filthy rag before you, but because you loved us, you still have used for us. Father, be glorified in our life. Father, Lord, be exalted, O oh God. We come before you, Lord, with our supplication. That every of our worries, every of our thoughts, oh God, that as your word goes forth this day, oh God, Father, it shall touch, oh God, every of our, of our thoughts, oh God, those things that keeps us in tears, oh God. Your word, oh God, you send forth your word, oh God, and it shall eat all of our diseases. In the name of Jesus, Father, everyone watching online, oh God, I bring them, Lord, to you, oh God. That which only you can do, oh God. Father, do for them. In the name of Jesus. You said in your words in Jeremiah 32, 27. That I am the God of our flesh. Is there anything too hard for me to do? Father, there is nothing impossible. There is no impossibility with you, Lord Jesus. Father, we hand over the service to you. In the name of God, the Father. In the name of God, the Son. In the name of God, the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit will welcome you. We we'll welcome you, Lord, to this service. Take charge, oh God. Take charge, Lord. Let lives be touched. Let yokes be broken. Let healings, oh God, manifest. And let your all glory, all adoration, oh Lord, be to your holy name. For in Jesus' matchless name, I have prayed. Amen. Amen. Our text this morning will be taken from the book of John. John 4, 22 to 24. John 4, 22 to 24. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. 24. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's bow our heads to pray. Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory. We thank you for making us to be alive in the land of the living, Father. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy, O oh God. Father, today we are gathered here once again to share your word. Father, we ask, O oh God, that you will take charge, O oh God. We ask that you will take absolute control, Father. You will speak through me, O oh God, and you will touch lives. Father, more of you and less of me in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, O oh God, we will live here fully packed with your word. Father, we will live here enriched. We will live here with something added to our lives. We will not live the same in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, take all the glory, take all the honor. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Before we go into the word... I would just like to welcome everybody to this service. It's choir weekend and it's, it's wonderful to have it again this year. And uh, I thank God for this opportunity. I thank the pastorate. I thank the entire church for this great opportunity. I don't take it for granted at all. We'll just sing a song before we proceed. All the glory must be to the Lord for he worthy of a praise no man on earth should give glory to himself all the glory must be to the Lord praise the Lord today our text is taken from the book of John chapter 4 verse 22 to 24 and the theme of this message is in spirit and in truth in spirit and in truth now we've heard worship 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 and we are going to go into that study today it's very very broad but God is going to help us to be able to you know discuss what we can within the stipulated time now i'll just give a ground on chapter four on john chapter four now it's uh if you read if you read backwards you see that jesus was headed to galilee from judea and he was going with his disciples and the bible said 
Jesus had to go through Samaria. Now, he didn't compulsorily really need to go through Samaria because he could have gone through another means, headed to Galilee. But because he was on a divine assignment to quench the thirst of someone who was emotionally thirsty, physically thirsty, spiritually thirsty. Now, you know, Jesus Christ, he, he rested along the way at that well in Samaria. But because he was on a divine assignment to quench the thirst of that woman, he had to go through Samaria. So at the end of the day, you will see that he had a purpose. God going through Samaria, Jesus going through Samaria had a purpose. Now, the Jews and the Samaritans, they didn't, they didn't uh, associate with each other because there was a strife between them. So one could, one, a Jew couldn't be caught talking to a Samaritan. But Jesus spoke to this lady, the Samaritan woman at the well. This is just a backstory on what led to that conversation of worship. Now Jesus initiated this, uh, this uh, conversation. And in the course of this conversation, worship came up. But the lady, you could see that her own, she was more concerned about the place of worship. Because she usually worship at the mountain, Mount Gerizim. But the Jews used to worship at the temple in Jerusalem. So she said, the, uh, their fathers used to worship at this mountain, but the Jews worship in the temple. Jesus Christ said, that is not the bone of contention. It is not just about the place of worship, but how you worship. How you worship. So that is what should be the focus. How you worship. Now, the Samaritans, they had some uh, questionable beliefs and doctrines which they believed in back then. So Jesus said, you, you worship what you do not know, but we worship what we know. Now, let us just go through worship. What is worship? What is worship, worship, worship? We hear worship all the time. We talk about worship. Anywhere you go, worship, worship, worship. Now, the dictionary definition of worship, it's a devotion, an adoration, an outpour of love, honor, or showing reference to a supreme being, to a deity, to someone that you place above yourself. And mind you, people worship different things, knowingly or unknowingly. People worship different things, knowingly or unknowingly. And the thing is, humans, as human beings, we are wired to worship. We are wired to worship. We are wired to give honor to something or to someone naturally so if you're not worshiping god you're worshiping something else but why now take for example people that go to uh, for concerts celebrity that go for uh, all these concerts you see people uh, for example let me give you the michael jack the late michael jackson you see people dying you know falling on the floor fainting like it goes that far people start emulating him their entire life is based on his activities, whatever. Unknown to them, that is worship. Some people worship false doctrines, animals, carved images. Some people worship their partners, unknown to them. Some people worship their partners. They look up to them for everything, literally everything. And there's another one, there's self-worship. There is self-worship. So now, we are going to talk about the focus, which is Christ. What is worship in the Christian uh, definition? Worship is giving God glory as you see the glory in him. Hallelujah. Giving God glory as you see the glory in him. As you see the glory in God, you give him glory. That is one definition that blew my mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And how do you see the glory? It is revealed by the Holy Spirit. God's word. So everything is connected. Everything is connected. Everything is connected. Now we're going to go to the, the main topic of today. It's not enough to worship. Anybody can worship. Anybody can worship. But there is a pattern that is required of us. By Christ. By God. To worship. So that is the topic of today. And how are we expected to worship? How, what, 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 what way are we expected to worship which is acceptable to God? In spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. In spirit and, and in that, in that uh, text, it says, those who worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. So that is the only acceptable way. That is the only acceptable way. Another definition.
definition of worship, which, which I, I will make before we proceed. Worship is a direct expression of ultimate living. That's why we created. To worship the man. So it's a direct expression of your ultimate purpose for living. A lifestyle that puts Jesus Christ at the center of everything you do. Anything you place above Christ, you are worshipping that thing. Anything you place above Christ, anything that is more important to you than Jesus Christ, you are worshipping that thing. So now let's go to the topic which is in spirit and in truth. Now I'm going to just break it down quickly. We'll just try to rush. Now how do you worship God in spirit? How do you worship God in spirit? We must know that worship in spirit begins as a revelation. It begins as a revelation, then it becomes an expression. Hallelujah. It begins as a revelation and it becomes an expression. We'll just look at three ways of how you can worship God in spirit. First of all, it comes from a spiritual life. Someone with spiritual life. Now, you cannot be spiritually dead and, be, and think you, you, know, you worship God. You cannot be spiritually dead. Because it is a spiritual activity empowered by the Holy Spirit. Once you have a spiritual life, which is you being born again, allowing the Holy Spirit to take control of your life, worship becomes style. You will not be forced to worship. You won't be forced to become like a punishment or just a, 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 a routine that you have to do. The Holy Spirit, he regenerates you into being born again. And he puts in you that desire. He puts it in you. So you have no other choice. You have no other option. You are wired. Automatically you are wired to worship the master. Once your life is controlled by the Holy Spirit. Another way which we can worship God in spirit. Is you can worship him whenever and wherever. There is no place. There is no bulleted or you know. Uh, Pen down place that is cast in concrete where you must worship. Some people think that if it's not the church building, if it's not house fellowship, if it's not self fellowship, you cannot worship Christ. No way. Hallelujah. God is a spirit. He's everywhere. He's everywhere. A spirit is like wind. You can't contain it. You can't contain it. So you cannot say wind is it's just in a particular place. Wind is everywhere. Wind blows. It blows everywhere. You can't contain it. So the spirit of God is everywhere. He's not restricted to a church building. He's not restricted to self-fellowship or a particular set of people. No way. You can worship God whenever and wherever. Because his spirit abides in us as believers. His spirit abides in us as believers. So we can worship God whenever, wherever and however. Now, the third way which we worship God in spirit is with our entire being. Hallelujah. With our entire being, with our bodies, with our hearts, with our mind, with our souls, everything within you worships God. Everything within you acknowledges God in your life. Everything within you worships the master. Everything is engaged. You're focused on him and him alone. Your heart, your mind, your bodies. It is very possible to be worshipping God with your lips, but your heart is not there. Like in Matthew 15, 18, when Jesus was saying the Pharisees honor him with their lips, but their hearts are far away from him. It is very possible. And also in Romans 12, 1, it says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. So everything within you, everything about you, needs to be surrendered needs to be laid before god needs to be needs to be given to god during worship everything about you your entire being focused on christ now you know it's possible to worship god in spirit and not in truth and it's also possible to worship god in truth and not in spirit now i'll just since this is the choir weekend i'll just say as as as, as choir members as people that are singing, leading others to the throne of worship. What is our focus? Are we, are we worshipping? Are we worshipping as led by the spirit? Are we worshipping with a heart of truth? Are we worshipping with the knowledge of Christ? Are we worshipping? You know Christ, the Holy Spirit initiates worship. He reveals himself to you. 
and then automatically you worship him. And you know, in the course of worship, you also see God. So everything, everything is connected. Now, how do we worship God in truth? We just finished looking at how we can worship God in spirit. How do we worship him in truth? Now, there is a quote. I just took a part of it and it says, Worship must have heart and it must have head. So as much as you're connected in your heart, as much as the Holy Spirit takes charge of you, as much as the Holy Spirit initiates this within you, regenerates you, you must have knowledge of who God is. You cannot worship who or what you don't know. You have to know about that person, know about that thing, and love it or love him. And in this case, we're talking about Christ, we're talking about God. So you have to know about God, love God, to be able to worship him in truth. If you don't know about him, you cannot effectively worship. You need to know his word. You need to know what the word says, who God says he is. Now, the first way to worship in truth is with true hearts. The first way to worship in truth is with true hearts. What does it mean to worship with true hearts? It's intentional. You're intentional about your worship. You're intentional. You're sincere. Not just because uh, you want to gain something from God. Not just because you've heard, oh, okay, God, I'm just worshiping you because of what I want to get from you. No way. It has to come from sincerity. Your true heart. And you have to get to the point where you say, God, if nothing happens, even if nothing happens, I will worship you and I will give you all the honor. Look at the three Hebrew boys in the fire. Ah, They got to the point where they said, even if Christ doesn't show up, even if Christ doesn't show up, but they will lay their lives, they will trust in him, they will believe in him. So we can't worship God just because of what we know he will give to us. We worship him with genuine hearts. We worship him intentionally, sincerely. We worship him with, with, with a, 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 true, a true mind. Hallelujah. How else can we worship God in truth? According to the word. According to the word. If you don't know what the Bible says about Christ, you won't know, you won't know the, the, the effective way to worship. And this word of truth is the gospel of our salvation. Hallelujah. We believe, we trust, and we profess God to be who he, is, who he says he is in the scriptures. And you know, it also comes from obeying the word of God. It comes from obeying, because somebody you love, somebody you worship, somebody you, you are literally emulating, you cannot do but obey his commandments. You have to obey his commandments. You have to obey his commandments. Hallelujah. And in John 14, 15 to 17, it says, if you love me, you will obey what I command. And, you will, and, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever, the spirit of truth. And if you read further down. So that is what it says about the knowledge of the word of God. The knowledge of the word of God. You have to be intentional about everything. You have to deliberately want to know more about God. Deliberately want to seek him out. Seek him out. As much as he's seeking us out, seek him out as well. And how can you do it through his word? Effective study. Hallelujah. The third way we worship God in truth is in Christ. Hallelujah. <laughs> Who is Christ is a truth. And it's only through him that we can worship God. Because he's the only access to the Father. John 14, 6. He says, Jesus said to Thomas, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. So Christ is the truth. Hallelujah. So if you worship in Christ, you're worshiping in truth. If you worship in Christ, you're worshiping in truth. Hallelujah. You know, people have, a lot of people think worship is, like for example, this is the choir weekend. And uh, we think, some people might think it's just about the instruments. Hey, when it's playing so wonderfully, ah, the, the, all the parts are so clear. The alto, the soprano, the tenor, everything, and it's so harmonious. They are not wrong. Because singing unto God is a form of worship. But that is not all of worship. That is not everything about worship. Singing is only a form of worship. It's only a part of worship. But when you lay down your life, when your lifestyle becomes daily referencing God in everything you do, acknowledging him, surrendering yourself as a living sacrifice, offer your life to Jesus. Everything, he takes control of your life. And automatically you find yourself worshipping. 
you are not you are not forced to do it. You won't you won't you won't uh, allow people to f- uh, push you first of all. Oh, come to come come to, let's come, let's gather let's let's worship the Lord. You will. It it is natural. It's stirring up within you. So it just comes out. It just comes out. It just comes out. And people, some people might think it's just about being solemn. Oh, you keep a sad face. Oh, that is when you're worshiping in spirit. That's when you're worshiping in truth. Or you must have, you must fall into a trance. You must fall into a, a deep revelation. Those things happen as well. People have trance. People have revelations and all that. But that is not all. It that's not all about it. That is not because you can do all of that and still there's no sincerity. Still, you don't have that deep understanding, that deep knowledge of what and who you're worshiping and how you're worshiping. Do you just do it as a routine? Not out of desire, not out of hunger, not out of love for God. You know, when you love something, when you love someone, in this case, we're talking about God, when you love God, you will seek Him or you will hunger for Him. You will desire Him more and more. So you will go out of your way, study His word, seek Him out, ask Him to reveal Himself to you in diverse ways. Are we just doing it to seek attention? Are we just doing it to let people know that, oh, this one is sure, she's worshipping very well. Ah, these people, they worship, ah, they do it very well. Is it just to seek attention? Is it just to satisfy ourselves? Is it just to satisfy ourselves and those around us? So these are things we need to go back to our closet and ask. Ask ourselves, what is, what, what is, our, what is our lifestyle of worship? What is our true intention? And some people believe that some other people are worthy to worship God. Some other people are unworthy. Probably because of the things they've done. Things they've been through. So they feel that they're not worthy to come before God. They feel that they are not worthy to, to seek the Father. They feel that they are not worthy to talk to God. But Jesus at the well. He spoke to the Samaritan woman. Not minding that she had several husbands. Not minding her past. He spoke to her in the calmest of ways. And he didn't tell her. Before he started talking about worship. He didn't tell her. Oh, you must, you, you've had five husbands. Go and repent, my friend, before you come and seek me out or before you worship me. Immediately, he told her, go and call your husband. After that, he said, you must worship me in spirit and in truth. He told her everything about her. That was a transformation in that woman's life. He didn't ask her, go and, go and uh, purify yourself before you come. And, no way. Already, she was transformed. She was transformed. So, God is seeking sincere people. Come as you are. Come as you are. And the Lord will cleanse you. He will cleanse you. Come as you are. You are, you, you are accepted in God's presence. Offer your lives. Seek him out. Ask for forgiveness. Surrender your lives. And he's willing and ready to accept you. Do we believe the words we sing? Do we believe the things we say? Do we believe the words we say about Christ? When you say things, when you, when you face situations... And you say, God is merciful. God is holy. God is kind. God is faithful. Do you truly believe it? There are rough times. Trust me, there are rough times. That will question a lot of things in your mind. There are, there are, there are situations that will come and you begin to question like, Lord, what's going on? Like, is everything alright? What, what is, is this, you said you are the this. You said you are the that. You said you are the provider. You said you are the healer. You said you are everything to us. What is going on? But it goes beyond that. It goes beyond that. Whether or not you are passing through things. Let Jesus, let the Holy Spirit, let God be your sole focus. And every other thing will fall in place. Every other thing. He will make every other thing align. Every other thing will align. It might take time. It might take time. But by the time you live a lifestyle of worship, you're fully surrendered to Christ. Everything about you looks up to God. He will make things align in due time. Hallelujah. Now, some people think that the Father cannot reveal himself to them. Some people think that God cannot reveal himself to them. That ah, it's just for some particular set of people. Just for them. No way. It is not. We are, we, are, we are the children of God. We are the sons of God. Once you make yourself open and available, God will envelop you. He will take charge of your life. And automatically, worship becomes a lifestyle to you. Worship becomes your daily, your daily practice. You find yourself worshipping anywhere, everywhere. And you won't wait for a particular gathering. You wait for a particular style to do it. You will just find yourself worshipping God. Acknowledging him. Giving him all the glory. Giving him all the honor. So as much as we sing. As much as we study the word. As much as we do all of that. 
we should know that worship should be our lifestyle. Worship should be our daily lifestyle. We shouldn't wait for a particular air. One particular, we feel like, oh, we must first of all shake. We must wait for one present. So, hey, the keyboard must play first. No way. It goes beyond that. There are people that are in the, in the remote areas. There are people that, that they don't have church buildings. They don't have a choir director pushing them. They don't have a pastor. Hey, waiting for them. Come, let's gather. Please, hey, let's do this. Let's do that. They don't have people waiting for them. You can see them going into, going into the forest, gathering on the road, singing, worshipping the king of kings. That is because they have an understanding. They have a knowledge. They have a true revelation of Christ. The more you see of God, the more you desire to worship. And the more you worship, the more you see of God. Now, having heard this word, having heard this word, I want us to close our eyes. I want us to speak to the Father. Speak to the Father and ask him, Father, give me a true revelation of worship. It's not just enough to say, Father, give me a true revelation of yourself. Give me a true revelation of how to worship. Give me a true revelation, O God, of yourself and how to worship you effectively, Father. Because we cannot do it with our flesh. We cannot do it with our flesh. As much as there are protocols to follow, as much as there are things you have to do, observe some particular things in the presence of God. Observe some due uh, uh, rules. But that is not all about it. That is not all about it. Talk to the Father and ask him, Father, reveal yourself to me. Reveal yourself to me in ways beyond my understanding, in ways beyond me. Father, reveal yourself to me, O God. Show me the true revelation of worship, O God, that I may not just do it for the, for the sake of doing it. I may not do it to please men. I will not do it to please anybody. I won't even do it to please myself. I will do it to please only you, O God, because that is the purpose you created us. That is the purpose you created us, to worship you and you alone. And Father, any other thing that is taking our attention, anything that is distracting us, O God, from focusing on only you and placing you at the center of our lives, Father, take it away. Take it away in the name of Jesus. Take it away in the name of Jesus. That our focus becomes you and you alone. We will worship you in spirit and in truth. Because that is the only acceptable way before you. There is no other way to worship you. But in spirit and in truth. Father, give us an understanding. Give us a deeper understanding of this, Father. We can't do this with our flesh. We can't do this on our own. By ourselves. We need you to take over our lives. Regenerate our lives. We surrender our lives before you, Jesus. Father, we come as we are. We come as we are and we ask, oh God, cleanse us, Jesus. Cleanse us and take charge of our lives. Take charge of our lives that we may begin to do things the right way. We may begin to worship you in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Father, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We thank you for your word this day. We thank you for speaking to us. We thank you for speaking through me, Father. Father, oh God, I thank you because I'm edified. I thank you for edifying your body. Thank you for, for reaching out to someone out there. Thank you for blessing lives, oh God. Father, we know that this is a continued process. It doesn't end here. As we step out, oh God, you will control our daily moves. You will, you will take charge of our activities. As we step out, oh God, we acknowledge you in everything we do. We reference you, oh God. As we step out, oh God, our lives will be an example of Christ. As we step out, oh God, people will look to us and they will see Jesus. As we step out, oh God, we will not, we will not fail you. We will not fail you, Jesus. We will not fail you, Father. Father, you will do much more than we've asked, O oh God. You will do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask and imagine. Father, because you are the King of kings, you are the almighty God. Father, there is nobody like you, Father. We thank you, O oh God. We thank you because we know that you are still doing things in our lives. We thank you for everything, Jesus. We ask, O oh God, that you take control of the rest of the service, O oh God, and you will have your way, Father. For in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah.
name of Jesus. Father, we bless you for your daughter. We worship you for her life. Father, we pray that she will truly worship you as she has taught us to do in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Um, the, the preacher said that giving glory, giving God glory as you see his glory, that means you cannot worship what you do not know. If you do not know God, you cannot worship him. So if you want to know this God that we worship, if you want to know this God that we talk about so much, I want you to close your eyes and say this prayer sincerely from your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Cleanse me and I will be clean. Wash me whiter than snow. And begin to rule and reign in my life. That at the end, I will not be a castaway in the kingdom. Father, thank you for accepting me into the body of Christ. Father, thank you that I'm able to join the angels and saints and give you glory. Yes, we worship you, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for these ones, O oh Lord, that have surrendered their lives to you. Father, we bless you, O oh Lord, for they are able, O oh Lord, to come to your throne of grace to obtain mercy. Father, we give you honor, adoration. Be thou highly exalted, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. The preacher said that singing is only a form of worship. Worship is a lifestyle, not just a slow song after two fast ones during worship. Let's pray for grace to reflect God in our lives. Pray for grace to be the Bible that people will read. Begin to pray. Open your mouth and ask God for grace to reflect Him. Ask God for grace to, to show forth His praise. Ask for God for grace to be the salt upon the earth. Ask God for grace to add several to the earth. Father, we pray for grace, O oh Lord, to reflect you in our lives. We pray for grace, O oh Lord, to be the worship that people will see. We pray for grace, O oh Lord, that our lives be a sacrifice, a living sacrifice, acceptable unto you, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, when you get out of your taste, when you get out of your style, when you get out of what you like, and begin to worship beyond the, the melody of the song, when you begin to, to see the lyrics, when you begin to pay more attention to the lyrics of a song, then you truly worship. Let's pray for grace to focus on God during our worships. Let's pray for the grace to focus on God during our worships. In the name of Jesus. Father, give us the grace to focus on you. To see you. To see your glory. To see your glory as the preacher has said. Give us the grace to see only you and you alone. Yes. Give us the grace to look beyond our troubles. To look beyond our worries. To look beyond anything that can distract us. Give us the grace to be focused and prepared, O oh Lord, to worship you in spirit and in truth. In the name of Jesus, Father, give us the grace, O oh Lord, to worship you. Come with me in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, let's pray for, uh, uh, we pray for humility during our worship. We pray for humility because God resists the proud. Let, yes, let our focus be on God and not on ourselves, not on our lives. Let our, our focus be on God Almighty. Let's pray for humility during our worship so that we, don't, we are not resisted by God. Yes, pray for humility to worship God in spirit and in truth. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let's, be, let's pray for grace to be deliberate ab about our worship. That even when he doesn't show up, we will worship. We will still bless him. We will still praise him. Even in the midst of the storm. Even when we don't know where we are going, we will still bless him. Pray for grace to be able to worship even when we do not understand. Pray for grace to worship even when we do not know what's going to happen next. Pray for grace to worship. To worship and see God beyond your problems. Father, we worship you. We give you praise. Be thou highly exalted in the name of Jesus. Yes, the preacher said that God is seeking sincere people. The Father is seeking true worshippers and not just worshippers. Those that will spend time with him and ask for nothing in return. Pray for grace to begin to spend time with God and ask him for nothing in return. Pray for the heart that truly loves the Father. A heart that is truly yielded. A heart that can enjoy God's presence without thinking of the benefits, without thinking of the things that come from it. Father, we bless your holy name for giving us, O oh Lord, that kind of heart, a heart that yearns for the Father, a spirit that can connect with you. Father, we worship you. Finally, David is a man that modeled worship. He modeled worship in different ways. He, he can kneel, he can raise his hands, he can meditate on the things that God has done for him. That's why we sing that we look be, we, 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 he looked beyond our, our sins and he showed us mercy. When we sing songs like that, we meditate on what he has done for us. Yes, and we can also dance. 
pray for grace to worship God in the ways in ways that are acceptable to Him. In the name of Jesus, pray for grace to worship God in ways that are acceptable to Him. Lord, we worship you. We give you praise. We give you honor, adoration. Be thou highly exalted, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And next, after the announcement, we are going to do another form of worship. We are going to shout. We are going to dance. We are going to praise the Lord. And I say, go to your neighbor and shout into his neighbor's uh, into your neighbor's ear and ask him. Are you ready to worship God in spirit and truth today? Lord, we bless your holy name. We worship you. Be thou highly exalted, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. What an awesome day it has been. We give God all the glory. I don't know where you are watching from, but it has been an awesome day. Please go nowhere. We'll be having the praise in the next session. So sit tight and just go nowhere. A brief reminder, I want us to join the RSCG Middle East and Maranatha Firstborn at 12 p.m. with the Assistant Continental Overseer on Tuesdays and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Dubai time. And also joining our mother parish, the Pa and Praise Chapel, Zone 3 headquarters. They'll be having the Divine Encounter service. It's always an awesome time. Every Wednesdays at 12 a.m. Dubai time, 12 a.m. And not missing our awesome Bible study sessions. It has been awesome back to back, so you don't want to miss it. It holds every Monday at 8 p.m. Dubai time. And above all, the last, not the least, on the 22nd of February, we'll be having the third edition of the Voice into God's Word. Have you been missing it? I would advise you not to miss this one. It's a night of fervent prayer, a night of wonders, miracles, signs. God has been doing a lot in our midst, so don't miss, don't miss this one. It's holding on the on February 22nd, this coming Monday. Don't miss it at 9 p.m. Dubai time. I repeat, 9 p.m. Dubai time. That's um, 6 p.m. Nigerian time time and other places around the world don't miss it and i see the good lord blessing you like my pastor always says push somebody and tell them it's time to praise the lord hallelujah somebody shout hallelujah 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 Amen. yes so eh. I've never seen this kind of before. Wonder, 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 wonder. Move your body. Hey. I've never seen this kind of before. Wonder, 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 wonder. wonder. The things that you do for me, oh, oh, nobody oh, can do. The miracles you bring my way. Oh, The things when you do for me, ah, nobody ah, can do. The miracles you bring my way, ah, even ah, by my mind, oh, do my Nothing compares to you. Gabby, I'll see you a wonder in my set. I never see this thing go before. Wonder, wonder, wonder. Move your body. Hey. Say. I never did this thing go before. Wonder, 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 wonder. Never, 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 Hey! 
Sin 